Hey everyone, so welcome to my video blog. My name is Stephanie Jensen and I'm a music journalist for the death metal community and I just want to say a quick happy birthday to Chuck Schuldener. So I'm going to be centering this whole video about Chuck and his legacy of death metal since today's birthday. So of course I'm wearing my, move my hair out of the way, my death shirt today and also here is my death tattoo for those who haven't seen it, it's this Green Bloody Gore album cover. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit of a huge death fan. So I'm not sure if you watched my other Chuck Schuldiner blog that I recorded a couple years ago on the day that he passed, but I pretty much discussed why it is that I love death, how they got me into death metal, and how that evolved into me becoming a death metal journalist. So with this blog, I'm going to discuss mainly about what particular death songs, death albums that uh, are some of my favorite and also the how that kind of how death metal kind of ties into thrash metal which is a topic that my friend Robert suggested. So I guess the best way to explain the evolution from thrash to death metal um, honestly anybody can look this up on Wikipedia but I'm just going to give you my interpretation and that was around in the LA scene obviously is when thrash metal started to become popular and then this took influence on members of Possessed who obviously followed along that same path of you know writing real like songs with a lot of uh, rapidity and all this um, you know like the you know, really vigorous, you know, like that sounding uh, music, but they took a lot more of an approach to be more guttural and to use violent and horror lyrical themes so that they uh, stood out as a lot more brutal than their thrash counterparts. And I remember doing my research early on when I was uh, first getting into death and uh, said that Chuck actually came across uh, one of Possessed albums or one of their first releases and then he just said like cool I want my band to sound like this or something and um, I guess how I see Death separating themselves from Possessed is they just took Possessed, um, well I guess that particular sound and they just did so much more with it. They added a lot more complexity, they added a lot more of the melody and the rhythm, but also with the technicality of the musicianship, and also more of, I mean, this didn't come later, obviously, in Death's music, but the odd time signatures, and uh, rather than following that verse, chorus, verse rhythm that, you know, thrash metal uh, has, and also Death's early music has, is um, eventually it started to, you know, their songs weren't as simply structured as that. They were a lot more complex and a lot more unpredictable and at least with me that's really what, um, you know, gets me is that when I was first listening to Death I never knew what to expect with any of their releases and I think that's one of the main reasons why people love that about them and I feel like that particular reason alone opened up a lot. Now I'm going to discuss some of my favorite death albums and as you can tell when you saw the tattoo on my leg obviously Scream Bloody Gore is number one. Off of Scream Bloody Gore, um, well when I listen to Scream Bloody Gore I listen to the first three songs. I listen to Infernal Death, Zombie Ritual, then Denial of Life and then a few other songs um, off that album I really like are Baptized in Blood, On the Unholy Grave. That is a very good song. Um, and then also uh, Evil Dead. I mean obviously that's an awesome movie. If you don't like that movie then you're really weird. But So yeah, Evil Dead. Um, and Torn to Pieces is another really good one. That's one of the catchier ones. But I like that a lot. I just think, I mean just about every song off the album is so delightfully brutal but those songs in particular are just really awesome. 
a few more albums, probably number two. Ooh. Um, I'm going to say Human. I usually say Sound, or before I would say Sound of Perseverance, but I don't know, probably Human. Uh, just because that album, you know, it was actually the first death album that I discovered. And when I first listened to that album, um, that's when I really thought, like, wow, I cannot believe people can play this. That was the first album that, you know, really introduced me to what death metal really is. And I was just so amazed, you know, not only of the technicality of that album um, and how, you know, exceptional the musicianship is, but also how catchy the album is. Like, I still listen to this album to this thing. And then off of Human, once again, like the first three songs, I absolutely um, freaking love. And then Lack of Comprehension, I mean I think I listened to that song a little too much. But yeah, that's, I mean it's it's a good song but everyone's like, oh my god, Lack of Comprehension. So I don't know, I guess I'm gonna be one of those people. Hmm. And then, I um, it's been several years since I first discovered it and I'm still, you know, I still catch myself thinking like, wow, like I love this part or wow, like I'm really hooked on this one part of the song or I really enjoy this song and I still, you know, and I've listened to this album how many times? Um, so that's the next album and third favorite album was going to be Sound of Perseverance just because I, like, that's another one of those albums to where so many of those songs are really catchy to me and they are... So my favorite solo off the album is definitely off the song Bite the Pain that I like still to this day it's just that solo gets me every single time. I really like that song. Um, I really want to get a Scavenger of Human Sorrow lyrics tattooed probably around my collarbone because I think tattoos right there look really cool. And the uh, lyrics from the song that I want to get uh, is where it goes behind Behind the pain you will find a scavenger of human sorrow and the reason why those lyrics mean a lot to me is because I used to get bullied when I was a kid and so it's just a reminder to me that you know no matter how people like when people are a dick to you um, it means that there's something a lot more inside of them and that you can either a sympathize with them or b you can probably say wow that is a very terrible person and they're trying to make me terrible so like that's not gonna work like, you're stupid so I don't know but either way I just think that would be a cool tattoo as a reminder to me like hey you know there's wrong something wrong with that person I'm doing all right kind of thing but I love that song and I also uh, love obviously Flesh and the Power It Holds um one of my favorite death instrumentals is well my first one my first favorite is Cosmic Sea my second favorite is uh, Voice of the Soul and the fact that you can create something that beautiful with just guitars like you know Chuck was such an amazing composer he well he was amazing everything but uh, he definitely a uh, composition that like obviously you can tell with every death song so that song I love and and I will honestly say that Chuck Schuldiner is my favorite uh, death metal vocalist and I will like how I realized that is by listening to Painkiller, uh, his cover of Painkiller and I mean he somehow was able to do like falsettos while growling. What? Like who can do that? That is ridiculous. So when I first heard that, I was thinking, wait, is this Chuck? Like they didn't get some of this is Chuck. And then my friend was like, yeah, that's Chuck. And I was like, god damn, that's really freaking good. So probably Leprosy will be number four of my favorite death albums. Um, I was really, really into Leprosy when I first discovered death. And honestly, I think I played it a little too much. So it doesn't really provoke me like it used to, but... Nonetheless, I feel like it's one of the albums where you can really start to hear the uh, transition from being brutal death to more progressive death. And 
Um, like, because you hear both those influences so much in that one album. And then Spiritual Healing is an album that I, at first, well, I always mean, really liked that album, but I didn't actually really start to get into it until recently. Um, and I don't know, like, nothing off that album really striked me as something that was absolutely amazing, or as far as the aesthetics of the composition is concerned, but... Uh, something about the lyrical content. Um, it was when I actually wrote a paper on death metal and I used a lot of um, reference to that one, well all of Death's albums, but also that one because it's the second one that they released and I don't know, something about the lyrical um, content just really, sh you know, I think it was because Lyrically, it was kind of the first album that Chuck started taking seriously um, because obviously Scream Bloody Gore was just like, let's write about a bunch of horror movies and fun stuff. So, um, but, and then they were actually started to get into serious topics with spiritual healing. So, um, yeah, probably say that one's the next one. There isn't really any songs that stand out, stand out to me, but I mean, when I listen to that album, I like to listen to it as a whole, but. Um, that'll probably be number five, and I know I'm probably going to be the death fan that everybody's going to hate when I admit this, but I am not the biggest fan of one of, uh, individual thought patterns, and two, a uh, symbolic. Neither of those albums really impressed me. I don't think that, they're not, I mean, no, no death album is a bad album, but I feel like out of the ones that I want to listen to. Neither of those are ever on my list just because, I don't know, I just don't, they just didn't hit me as, <clears throat> as um, effectively as the other albums did. So everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but that's just me. So if you were expecting me to talk about individual thought patterns or symbolic, sorry. Uh, and Control Denied, I appreciate Control Denied, I just never really got too, too familiar with their music just because it is so different than Death, and I appreciate Chuck for going in a completely new direction just because it really showed how unpredictable he was as a musician and how he truly was limitless, but I don't know, I mean I just couldn't get as into it as I could with Death's music, but whenever I, I do listen to Control Denied, I honestly really always enjoyed what I hear, um, just never actually became too familiar with um, the music. So how much else can I talk about death? I think I have said just about everything I could say about death. So I guess I'm just going to end this video because I don't even know what else to talk about and this video has been going on for... Well, not like a really, really long time, but like long enough to where you're probably watching this like, okay, I'm so sick of this chick talking about freaking death, like, okay. So, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, yes, I am one of the few several people on YouTube talking in front of a camera, like, give a shit about me. But, there is another reason to give a shit. And that is because I actually interview bands. Like I actually go to shows and have a microphone that I don't have in my hand because it's on the other side of the room. I've been like, oh hey, so it's that. You play music. You're cool. You know? So which is kinda cool. So you should totally subscribe to my channel and watch my interviews and watch the interviews I have already published on the channel because they are awesome. I'm going to include all links on the description of this video, but pretty much, uh, just remember, it's, pretty, it's either Stephanie Jensen Metal or Stephanie Metal or one of those. Like, I know Facebook and Instagram is Stephanie Jensen Metal and... Twitter is Stephanie underscore metal. The only one that's different is Tumblr because it's SJ metal block. Oh. So yeah, because my social media is pretty great if you want to see me post about bands and my cat and my face. Because I'm a girl. So of course I'm like, 
Hey, selfie. Hey. You know? So, yeah, totally do that. And, uh, yeah, like, I will think you are seriously awesome if you subscribe and follow and add and um, whatever other freaking terminology you want to use for social media. So, yeah. Um, and expect more blogs like these. I'm going to try and put one out once a week since I'm not working right now. I should be able to, but knowing me, I will probably just be like, nope, I'm gonna do something else, and then, yeah. But, I will try. Uh, ooh, um, Beyond the, uh, I can't really, really, can't talk. Beyond the, since, uh, okay. I always.